Hey, Mister. You know how many guys are coming back like you, or not at all? You give me one good reason why you would go back there, and so I can make it right. There's not one single day that goes by, and I don't think about the guys that I lost. Sometimes you just have to. Hey mister, this is the Oldenburg Film Festival. We are here with the producer, director and the actor of Happy New Year. Welcome. Here we have um, Kay Laurel Manning hey. and Michael Kumo. Hi. Um, the first the idea for this film came, or well, the seed was planted in 2004. I was in a bookstore and I came across a book called uh, Purple Hearts Back from Iraq by a woman by the name of Nina Berman. She's a photographer, a US photographer. She's been all over the world, exhibitions everywhere. And what Nina did was she put she published a book of photographs of the first wave of veterans to return and they were brutally injured from the war. Um, all kinds of injuries, missing limbs, severe burn scars, traumatic brain injury. I picked up this book in the bookstore and I was very taken aback by what I saw inside. And that began my journey with this subject matter. And for the next three years or so, I just researched whatever I could, interviewed as many people as I could, not really knowing what I wanted to do with the material. And in January of 2007, I was in Chicago, Illinois, and I was researching another project about Chicago policemen. And I rode around with several policemen, and one of the gentlemen that I rode around with was an Iraq vet. And we talked for several hours about his life post-war and how difficult it was for him to reacclimate himself to any sort of normalcy that he knew before. So that conversation really inspired me to sit down that evening and write a small one-act play called Happy New Year. And it was about two veterans who were reuniting on New Year's Eve in a VA hospital in America and contemplating what they were going to do with their futures. So the first person I sent it to is a really close friend of mine and um, actor Michael Cuomo, and he can tell you what he thought of it when he saw it, when you read it. Yeah, um, so Laurel and I had worked together off-Broadway in New York and had been talking about doing a project together um, a new project and so he sent me happy new year and my printer wasn't working at my apartment so i watched it uh read it on my uh, laptop screen and uh when i got to the end uh i was going to send him an email with a response to the piece and my computer was all uh like uh, fuzzy i couldn't see the screen you know so i i i sort of tried a few things and i couldn't get it to work so i just said I'll just leave it for a moment and I got up and when I saw my face in the mirror I realized that I had been crying except I didn't even know that I had been crying you know it was like an inner um, release that I, I was completely subconscious I guess and uh, you know I cleaned myself up and sure enough the computer was fine but I decided to call him instead and uh, I, I said I've read the play it's tremendous I'm uh, complete, uh, completely shattered over here. Uh, we have to do this. We have to, we have to take this somewhere and do it. So, um, several months later, after rehearsals and developing the character and stuff like that, uh, the play went off Broadway in New York, um, which was really the, the beginning of of this whole process want to ensure as much accuracy as possible because I'm not a veteran, neither is he. Um, and I think only reading so much is going to take you so far, you know. So we sat on this journey of interviewing um, dozens and dozens of veterans from various wars. Um, started with Vietnam, no, started with Iraq and Afghanistan, then we brought in Vietnam veterans and World War II veterans and some Desert Storm veterans. So. It ended up being over 80 people, along with their some family members, as well as VA personnel and military personnel, um, 
to ensure accuracy, and I even had a lot of these people read the script, various drafts of the script, just so I could get it right. Um, and that was very, very helpful to to us. And so these same people, when they see the film, praise its authenticity because um, there's a lot of accurate, a lot of it's accurate. They can really relate to the characters. It's not some kind of Hollywood version of their lives. Yeah, because well, I didn't, I didn't know how to interview. You know. Um, if you're talking to someone who um, has been through what these men and some women have been through, um, a lot of that they keep inside and it's very hard to get it out of them. So, and if you're not in the military or you haven't seen what they've seen, it's very hard for them to open up. So the first two or three interviews were not very successful because they didn't trust me. I didn't know how to speak to them. Um, and then we just were, we decided to just be ourselves, you know, um, and, and explain what we were doing. And then we had the short film that we'd created to show them, and, and that would always get a response out of them. And so over time, we learned how to interview people, and the interviews would last usually two to three hours, mostly three hours or longer. And the first hour was really a lot of generality, general conversation. Uh, and then the second hour, we would show them the film, and then we'd talk about the short film and their experience in watching that, what, what it brought up for them. And then we'd start talking a little more in depth about their lives and their time in, you know, in the military or overseas. And slowly but surely they would start to reveal things um, that experiences that they'd had, they'd gone through. Um, a lot of times there were sessions, we were meeting people who were telling or revealing things for the first time. They never told their wives or girlfriends or even their doctors some of the things they, they revealed to us because they trusted us. Um, so that, a lot of that went into the script. It was a lot to take in at times. And very hard for me to write the script because you're walking around with all these horrible stories in your head um, and you want to get it right. We did a lot of research um, for the, this particular character. Uh, Laurel brought on a medical advisor uh, who helped me with, um, so that, you know, the character is in a wheelchair and the character uh, has been paralyzed below the waist from uh, an ambush and basically uh, needed to learn how to work in a wheelchair. Uh, I was given a wheelchair that I could use on my own, uh, would wheel around New York City. Uh, and then there would be rehearsals where I would rehearse with Laurel and some of the other actors, um, as well as our military advisor who, who put me through. Uh, he and Laurel created a boot camp. Uh, he was a former Marines drill instructor. Um, so he taught me the, how Marines speak, how they, you know, how they hold their body. Um, even though the character is in a wheelchair, something that's very important to a Marine is to always uh, be proud and to always be strong in the face of danger. And this character, of course, is now home, but is in personal danger, you know? And he's now um, fighting very hard to maintain who he is. So that, that was part of the research. After meeting these people that put their entire life at stake for the freedoms of the United States, for example, uh, I now have a, a higher appreciation of what they do. Um, and I realize that it's not necessarily always their decision to fight. You know, it's, it's the president's decision. You know, we're using our creativity to affect change in some way. If we have no power in Washington, we do have power um, with our, our talents to shed light on people who are suffering in silence. So that's what we hope to do with this film and create some sort of dialogue. www.happynewyearfilm.com and the Facebook and Twitter page. Uh, just uh, H&Y Film.